Hey guys, uh, today we're doing another toolbox talk, stunt rigging toolbox talk. I think this is like Lucky 13. Um, and I guess we're going to start getting into stuff that's a little more complicated. Um, one of my favorites and that's ratchets. Um, ratchets, I, I, the term has a long history. I've heard several different varieties of explanations. I'm not going to bother. That's a discussion for um, other people at other times, but we call them ratchets. They're mechanical devices using pneumatic cylinders and valves to pull primarily, um, though if you're good at them, you can use them as uh, decelerators. You can use them for a variety of other, uh, you can use air springs to give uh, weight free or like anti-gravity field things. You can do a million things over there, cool machines. Um, Basically, we're going to go through each part today for nomenclature so that I don't have to go through and explain everything every time because it uh, a lot of this is pneumatic theory that's used in industry for the last hundred years. Um, you know, half of the industrial plants are controlled logic controllers on air cylinders that push, pull, move, grasp and do things um, in factories and in manufacturing. And all we did was bastardize the force that you can, it's a force multiplier and using compressed gas, which we'll get into because I, uh, I'm not a nitrogen fan. Everybody, you know, I, it's old wives tales. That's what we're here to debunk. So let's just keep it simple today. Um, a little diagram. You're going to always have some form of trigger box. And this trigger box will usually have two valves or one valve that works two ways. Um, I prefer two valves. The, there's a million different valves. The, the reason I make what I make is that they're the fastest and highest flowing, which you'll see later on plays a big difference in how you operate in your operating pressures. Needless to say, you're going to have a valve. You're going to have an accumulator, which is a tank. That is plumbed usually through a valve manual into your trigger box. That's how you get air into the box. This box has valves that turn on and off at the push of a button normally. Um, there's buttons floating around here. I've got tons of them. Um, so, in fact, I'll reach down and. Ah, there's one on the other little box. So you have a button, it plugs into the box. When it's powered on, you hit the button, the ram, which is stroked out, and again, we use them incorrectly. We use them, normally pushing is the stronger stroke, but it requires a bunch of uh, building stuff that stunt guys don't have the skill for, and it just complicates things because they have to be fixed in a rigid frame to allow to read them correctly. It's just, um, in the interest of simplicity, we use them on the pull stroke only. So here's your button. When you push, the accumulator has pressure in it. However many PSI or bar, depending on where you live, a bar is 15.5 um, PSI. It's one atmosphere. Um, yeah, you'll get lost in all these numbers. So you take the air pressure from here, you put it to a valve, you push a button, it goes out of that valve generally to a cylinder. And the cylinder has a rod, which could also be a cable with a connection on the end. And you attach this connection to whatever rope, and this is the cylinder. Okay, so that's how simple. Air goes from here to here. At the push of a button, it goes from here to here. You get off the button and it exhausts, okay? So it's just simple. You hit the button, air flows to this cylinder. You get off the button, there's no more air going to the cylinder and the pressure is exhausted from the system and the cylinder can come back out again. Um, so those are your components. You have an accumulator, you have a trigger box, and you have a cylinder. Now, there's a, a zillion permutations. Mine are complicated. They're actually super simple, but complicated because they follow the rules of pneumatic and industrial plumbing. To fill your accumulator, you're going to use some form of pressurized gas. This is going to be 
a high pressure tank, usually, and it's your fill tank. You're going to put air from that into your accumulator to whatever pressure you want for you've calculated for weight and distance and all those fun things. It's going to be armed here. We push the button, it's going to push air into this cylinder, which is going to retract this rod or cable, thereby pulling the rope that's attached to the end of it. Pretty simple. Just to give you an idea, we use four inch and five inch cylinders. Here in front of me is a typical four inch cylinder. Um, so I'm going to do a talk on each piece because there's so many nuances and so much bullshit out there about how things work and what we should do and blah, blah, blah. It's really fucking straightforward. Um, it all goes to airflow. It goes to time. It goes to speed. Um, you know, we get into things that a lot of guys can't wrap their head around. Like, like speed is not a time related thing. Speed is a matter of how fast something is going. Whereas quick, a better term, is how in unit time something reacts and moves. So you could be very quick and not be as fast. Or you could be very fast and, and slow time-wise over a specific distance. And these are over distances measured. So you gotta think of it like drag racing. Uh, you can be quicker because you get accelerated quicker, you come off the line quicker, you get to the end quicker, but your overall speed may be less when you measure the ultimate top speed than the person that you have beaten who was slower in terms of time factor, but faster in terms of kilometers or miles per hour over set distance. So in ratchet theory, this plays a huge part in how you adjust things, how you increase pressures, decrease pressures, and how you read them, okay? So in this setup, you have a number of variables. So your fill gas is usually a high pressure. It'll have 200, 300 bar um, in it. You make a device that can fill this tank to whatever you would desire. You read it off a gauge. The tank should have a gauge. Then it goes to the trigger box at the push of a button and it moves the cylinder. Now, just to give you an idea of the mechanical advantage on these things, um, this is a four inch cylinder. So for every PSI that goes into this, you are under ideal conditions. You have, this is four inch. So if you do the math formulas, because, oh, that's right, it's industrial. They have formulas for how this works. It's seven pounds of force generated by this cylinder at the rod end. Let me slide it over. Here's the rod end. I don't have an attachment on it. It could be something as simple as a clevis. And we'll get into all sorts of things, but the clevis has a pin. The pin holds either a pulley or a rope, depending on your clevis. Okay? And this will pull the rope. Now, that means for every PSI, you get seven pounds of pressure in this. Okay? So that means if you have a hundred pounds of pressure, you have 700 pounds of force you're able to jerk with. Beats the shit out of jumping off a fucking ladder. Okay? It's, it's, it's also, and that's in overall force. Now, if you start looking at it in terms of time, you can only generate so much instant acceleration by jumping off a ladder. You are governed by gravity. Hey, funny enough, you're on the fucking earth. So... This is why I like machinery. It's repeatable. You get the same situation every time. You're not guessing a ladder jump. You, the sky's the limit when it comes to how quickly or how fast you want someone to move. Okay, so you have to remember to separate those two things in your mind. So air would come into the nose of this cylinder. It would push that piston back and that would pull the rod. And this is a, a meter 25 or also known as a four foot cylinder. Um, I get them, this is called a tie rod cylinder because it has four tie rods holding billet end caps on a tube. Inside there's a piston and seals attached to a rod. Put air in one end, it pushes the piston down the tube, okay? So that's your basic system. It's comprised of 
a high pressure fill, a tank that accumulates, it's known as accumulator, whether it's hydraulics or pneumatics, a trigger box, which has your valves and electronic components, and then your cylinder, which could be a simple welded cylinder. It can be a custom carbon fiber wrapped, but it better be aluminum lined with a one or two mil aluminum or else you won't seal after a while. It just eats the shit out of the carbon fiber on the seals. Oh, and if you're gonna wrap them, I mean, there's a million things. I'll get into it when I, when I start talking about cylinders. Anyway, so that's a basic system, okay? And this is gonna be the intro to ratchets right now. Um, and here's an example of an accumulator. This is an 11 liter aluminum bottle. And because my systems run off a slightly different plumbing system, this has been punched out past the M20 thread that's normally inside of here. And it has a 1G, also a, known as one inch BSPP, British straight pipe thread. Um, basically, you can read the newspaper through it. You can see it's huge. Um, but that also goes into the reason why my ratchets work the way they do and why they're so efficient and why they function correctly. Now, accumulator needs to be sized. Again, math, kids. There's a certain volume of air that goes into this, okay? If your accumulator has less than that volume of air, if you put in 100 pounds of pressure, or a, whatever you want to call it, bar, it, I don't give a shit, it's X, X units. Unless you have enough volume, that air pressure, when it fills this, it will decrease because you don't have enough volume at that pressure to fill this cylinder, okay? So, guys, I've seen it a million times. They're, oh, I got a ratchet and I'm using this and it doesn't fucking work. And yeah, that's because you're using a, a, an eight foot or a two and a half meter ram with a 10 liter accumulator. Well, the two don't go together, kids. The two are completely not compatible. You need a lot more volume. So this 11 liter is sized for this ram, which is a meter 25 or four feet, okay? And it gives you enough extra in here, since we use this incorrectly on the rod side, the rod eats up volume, so you can't put compressed air into the rod. So it's actually slightly smaller volume on the rod side than it is on the non-rod side, because that's an empty cylinder, okay? So the 11 liters, if you calculate this, is a couple of liters over what you need for the filling this to the same pressure that this would be at, okay? So that means if you ran this at full stroke and you filled this and you wanted 100 PSI in your cylinder and you had 100 PSI in this, you would be able to fully stroke this at 100 PSI and maintain it at 100 PSI in its retracted position with this cylinder equalizing with what's in here, okay? So that's why volume is important. So a lot of things are gonna be like that in this discussion. So if you don't like science, fuck off and pull rope. Otherwise, if you wanna learn stuff about mechanics, this is mechanical rigging. Um, Jim Shumway does a great book. Uh, I have to look at the title of it because he's been there, done that. But there's like three different things. There's hand pulls and, and acrobatic-y, you know, like counterweight for dancers and stuff. Then there's mechanical rigging using machines, which would, uh, be ratchets, descenders, decelerators, um, all our force multipliers and, and braking devices. Those are the machines rigged in. And then you get to the winch world, which is all programmed in and done by smart machines on logic controllers. And you have up to four winches or more functioning together, synchronized, and then you can, you can do things there. So there's, uh, there's different levels. This is mechanical rigging. You're using a force multiplier, something that actually can do more work than you, and you're using it for the force it can generate. And we use ratchets for those reactive shots and explosions, um, for people that are flying through the air, people that get uh, yanked out of the way when a car, you can shoot it in several ways, but it can look like a car hit, um, or somebody gets skied by getting hit by a speeding car. Um, there's a lot of ways to use this in the pulling fashion. Um, they're reactive shots, generally, that that's what they're for. You can use them in other ways to decelerate because you can use the stroke and the negative air pressure generated to decelerate someone over time. But that is a bit trickier and it requires a little more math and a little more knowledge. So right now we're just gonna stick with the reactive pulling simple function of a, of a ram.
Okay, so I was talking about cylinders. This is a tie rod cylinder. This can be rebuilt. This can be, you know, this is an industrial standard. Um, I have mine made quite a bit different. What you can't see inside is considerably different than, than what normal cylinders are, and the same goes with the porting. Um, all right, so that's our system. That's our introduction. I'll, I'll pick up on the next one. Um, I'll clip into a picture of a trigger box. You already know what, a, what this looks like, an accumulator. You know what the cylinder looks like. Uh, the ratchet trigger box, one of them is there. There's another over there. Um, and I'll show you the valving in between, and I'll do little intercuts, and we'll basically walk through the functions of each, and then we'll get back to the theory and the logic of how and why things are built the way they are. All right? So that's the beginning of what we're doing here, and it's the start of, which will be probably one, two, three, four, five, or six parts on ratchets, because um, it's gonna take that much for most people to get a grip on it. Okay, all right, take care.